Order, Owen Thompson to move the motion. Thank you, Chair, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to secure the debate today and talk about an issue very close to my heart and that of my community, um, an absolutely integral part of Scotland and the UK's history and present. In advance of this debate, having been told I'd secured, I reached out to the uh, community in Midlothian and asked for views and memories of many of those who had been involved at the in time and the height of the, the minor strikes and was overwhelmed with the response from uh, residents in Midlothian and, and very thankful to them for, for sharing their memories and experience. But as events fall into the past and become history, it's very easy to forget that the people involved were real people. Their lives mattered and they were affected in very tangible ways. And in the case of the minor strike of 1984-85, the history isn't that long ago, and the people at the heart of it are still feeling real pain and injustice. That, that, I have to say, that's at the time I moved to Lonehead, so we kind of moved to the town at the height of the strikes. It, criminal records, lost pensions, social stigma, the, these were the real-world consequences that many are still living with, but they're never, they've never been fully addressed or listened to. And, but that can change. Ex-minors and their families deserve the chance to feel listened to and for the government to take action off the back of what they say. That's why I'm calling for a public inquiry into the strikes and to get the answers and redress for those affected by the many injustices that those events caused. This isn't about a grievance, nor is it about dwelling in the past. It's about the future. It's about recognising that to move forward, we need to heal the wounds of the past. Now, how we approach the past says a lot about who we are today. Do we learn from injustice? Do we listen to lessons learned? Or will we do it all again, given the chance? These are the questions that need answered for the sake of communities across the country, especially like my own in Midlothian. The way we achieve that is through a public in inquiry into the policing of the strikes. Mining Midlothian dates back all the way to the 12th century when the monks of New Battle Abbey first began extracting coal. By the 20th century, mining was integral to the country's way of life. Midlothian was a, a home of a range of pits from Bilson Glen and Moncton Hall to the first Victorian super pit at the Lady Vic Victoria Colliery, uh, still the home of Scotland's mining museum and I would recommend a visit to any members at uh, present. But by the 1980, Mines meant minor strikes. A token packet of six was maintained at Moncton Hall, but at Bilston Glen and Lone Head, it saw the mass picketing and some of the most bitter conflicts in the striking in Scotland. Such was the significance of Bilston Glen and the story of the strike that Tom Wood, the former Deputy Chief Constable of Lothian and Borders Police, said, did we have conf violent confrontations? Yes, we did. And they were mainly in the days when visiting pickets came to Bilston Glen. And according to Professor Jim Murdoch, minor stories showed without doubt that the criminal justice system all too often reacted in an arbitrary and disproportionate manner. Mm -hmm. This is unfair and unbalanced reaction from authorities and it often took the form of arbitrary sentences being handed out, usually whether a charge is stuck or not. And during the recent in committee stages and in looking into the, the um, Scottish Government's uh, minor strike uh, pardons bill. Um, a, a former colleague of mine in Midlothian Council, Alec Bennett, um, former miner at Moncton Hall, um, said, uh, I was snatched by one of the snatch squads. They went for the union officials and they knew our names. The original charges were for rioting, but that wasn't going to stick, so they changed it to breach of the peace. The tactic was to simply use whatever means necessary to get miners, especially union officials, off the picket line and into the cells. Breach of the peace, obstructing a police officer, breach of bail and theft, all of these charges and more were twisted to justify the Snatch Squad's style of policing. It would be better suited to Putin's Russia today. This is not what good policing looks like, yeah. and it does an injustice to the rule of law. And serious questions still remain to be answered about the extent of alleged political interference in the policing of the strike. I thank the Honourable Member for giving where he's making a very powerful speech. Uh, the events of 84 and 85 shaped many of our politics, including mine. I grew up in Castleford, West Yorkshire, a mining community. I remember some of the police tactics, people stopping us from going about our community, the Metropolitan Police in particular. 
those events shaped my politics, you know, obviously in my case, Labour, um, um, and I found certainly that experience, but also Margaret Thatcher, would you believe it, for my membership of the, of the Labour Party. I commend you in terms of campaigning with others across the chamber for truth and justice for all grief. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, and I thank the Honourable Member for his contribution. And I think like so many, um, these, these events, and events like this, yeah. have shaped the politics of, of so many and, and brought many to a more active role in, in politics through whatever means the, the Labour Party, SNP, whatever it was, events like this bring people forward. And the Honourable Member mentions the Orgreave situation and I had a, a conversation earlier with uh, Chris Peace from the Orgreave Chiefs and Justice campaign and I think it's certainly worth highlighting from their side of things as well that there are still serious unanswered yeah. questions. Yeah. But disproportionate response to strikes didn't stop in the courts. It affected minors' financial futures. Arrested strikers were sacked and denied redundancy payments and pension rights. Um, again, from the evidence that Alec Bennett gave uh, to the, the Holyrood Committee, only later on did we realise that anybody who'd been arrested was not just going to get fired. They were going to lose their job and lose their redundancy payment. I was an official in the miners' union, and we used to sit in with the men when they were getting made redundant. I knew exactly what I would have got if I'd been made redundant at the time. I would have qualified for 27,000 in 1985. I never got that, and it's still bitter to this day that I was denied that because of the attitude of the coal board in Scotland. He was one of over 100 miners who were blacklisted, and it took many of them years to find work. And I have to say, on top of this, a former spy, uh, Chief Dame Stella Remington, uh, revealed that MI5 tapped union leaders' phones during the strike. This was broadcast by Channel 4 dispatches as far back as 1994. Now, Midlothian, as much in the 80s as today, is a place where community is king, and we only have to look over the last month to every weekend there was a, a community event or gala day, and just at the Saturday past at Lone Head Gala Day, the home of Bilston Glen, we have the, the Miners Memorial, where it's now an integral part of gala day celebrations that we remember those who lost their lives in the pits. But I think as part of that, it's also important that we remember what else happened uh, around the pits. Within each town and village, people know each other, and folk from all walks of life intermingle, and that's exactly what made the strikes such a bitter affair. In Dander Hall, the local miners club had a bowling green and the Lothian Borders police would use for their annual competition. Police and miners would have a good bevy together afterwards and chat and chew the fat. After the strike, that connection was severed and that's no small thing for a close-knit community like Midlothian and many others. But it's worth being clear about this. This isn't just an exercise in digging up the past. It's about recognising what, that, what, what wrong has been done and that now we have the power to address it. The, the Scottish Government rightly recognised the scale of this injustice back in 2018 when it commissioned an independent review led by John Scott QC into the impact of policing on communities during the strike. Following testimonies from former miners, police officers and mining communities, uh, the review group made one single recommendation, that the Scottish Government should introduce legislation to pardon miners convicted for certain matters related to the strike. The Minor Strike Pardons Bill was welcomed by the NUM for removing the stigma of a criminal record. And I'm delighted to see that bill having passed unanimously, I have to say, in the Scottish Parliament within the last couple of weeks. So some might ask why we need a UK inquiry if the Scottish one was such a success. Aside from the fact that miners and their families across the rest of the UK also deserve justice, it's important to look at what the Scottish inquiry couldn't do. It couldn't consider elements of policy reserved to the UK, including the crucial issue of trade union relations. It couldn't address the allegations of political interference by the UK government, an absolutely critical question. Without these missing pieces, ex-miners and their families will never get the full truth. Only a UK-wide inquiry can deliver that. And on top of that, we have to consider the question of compensation. It's yeah. only natural. And in many cases, a pardon simply won't be enough to undo decades of financial loss suffered by many miners. Unfair dismissal and the subsequent loss of redundancy payments and pension rights has a lasting effect impacting on many to this day. Ex-miners and their families deserve a compensation scheme to ensure not only moral justice, but an economic justice too. As such, the Scottish Government supports this idea, but its hands are tied by devolution. 
Employment and industrial relations are reserved to this place, so it's up to the UK government to devise such a scheme. A compensation system that's uniform and fair across the UK is something that only a UK-wide inquiry could deliver. It's crucial that any inquiry should put reconciliation at its heart, just as the Scottish inquiry did. The principles at the heart of the review were put so eloquently by Professor Jim Murdoch, as he stated as following. As members of the independent review, our task was primarily to listen, to show that those affected by the minor strike had a voice more than a third of a century later. At each of the meetings we held, it was clear that the pain felt by former miners and their families was still raw. Our task was to seek to promote a sense of reconciliation. The minor strike is a part of our history and it's shaped communities like Midlothian to this day. It, my own predecessor uh, in this place, uh, former MP for Midlothian, uh, Sir David Hamilton, or Davy as he's still very well known in Midlothian, was not only an ex-miner, but he was arrested on the Bilston Glen picket line and, and blacklisted. And as I understand, the only miner to actually face trial by jury and be acquitted uh, through the strikes. It's hard to overstate the impact of the strike on our politics even today, to relate back to the point by the Honourable Member. And, but mining communities also shape our future. Midlothian's mines are now abandoned and flooded, but that very water in the mines is an energy source rich with huge potential. By tapping geothermal energy from the heat in that mine water, we could use that power for the future. I applaud local activists, academics and the coal authority for working to make mine water energy a reality ac across the country and it's something that I continue to push for in Midlothian. And in looking ahead to that future, it's never too late to right the wrongs of the past. Sometimes time needs to pass before our society is mature enough to throw its hand up and admit that it did wrong. So it's not unusual to have historic inquiries into events long after the fact. Uh, take example, Bloody Sunday, it took 36 years for an inquiry to be launched into those shootings. And the final report was published 15 years after that. It should happen sooner. Nobody can, I think, deny that. But likewise, we should have had an inquiry into the minor strike years ago. But the best time to plant a tree may have been yesterday, so the second best time is now. It's never too late. All history is contested, and there are two sides to every story, miners, police, communities, government. But a government proves its maturity by being able to listen to both stories and represent them equally. By weaving the injustices of the miners' strike into our national story, we show our history is for everyone and is truly national. That process of healing and by picking up the Scottish Government's baton and delivering, could start today. Thank you. Yeah.